All right, so let's just get started. So what's up everybody? This is Jesse from VCC Board Repairs. Thanks for joining the live stream. Uh, today is gonna be a pretty long video. I mean, we've already, uh, I think I've been here already 12 minutes trying to get this working. But uh, today we're gonna do iPhone 10. This came in for, um, hold on. This came in for um, no no Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but once I started uh, playing with it, I also noticed it has uh, no service. So let me go ahead and get started with this repair. This is going to be a long one. Um, so as, as you can probably see, there is a cellular update failed. Uh, your iPhone cannot make or receive calls uh, or access cellular data until ha it has been updated. So I don't know why Apple worded it that way, but it's kind of misleading. It, it, it uh, it's basically kind of telling you that oh you need to update it, but that's not really the issue. Um, like there's no situation where the phone will naturally need an update to fix something like this. So it's kind of just weird kind of Apple marketing wording. I'm sure they had a whole team on how to word this. But uh, so that's one issue. Another issue is, um, oh look at that, Wi-Fi is working. So uh, you know Wi-Fi works when you can turn it on and off. And then Bluetooth wasn't working. Yeah, see, right now Bluetooth is not working. Earlier was, I mean, earlier Wi-Fi wasn't working and Bluetooth. And then you can see the little cellular icon up here just constantly uh, scrolling by. Um, so these are all different symptoms of, um, oops, quick screenshot. These are all s different symptoms of, um, of a sandwich issue. So right now if I go to the cellular you also see that it says error. So if you click on that it also says uh, update is required to use cellular data on this iPhone. So if you ever come across this uh, surprisingly enough touch still works. Uh, as you can see um, I think everything else seems to work too. You can see here um, so constantly no service even though I don't have a SIM card so that's not normal if you if you don't have a SIM card it should say no SIM like uh, that's just a fact um, so keep that in mind let me see I'm gonna twist the twist it a little bit the Wi-Fi wall well seems to be working so yeah, Wi-Fi is working it literally wasn't right before I started the stream so by the way if you're watching uh, do me a favor and share it on Facebook uh, in the Facebook groups just because I'm doing the video so it's kind of hard for me to, <laughs> to do it myself um, you know, post a story or whatever alright so um, let's go ahead and do a quick inspection so I already have this uh, disassembled we're gonna take off the screen. We're gonna take off, unplug all the flex cables. And then, so now that you guys mentioned about the loud noise, I might get a separate switch just for my fume extractor so that I could turn it off when I'm not soldering. So, Thing is kind of stuck. Oh, I see. There it goes. All right. So uh, this is an iPhone 10 logic board. It is a two-layer design. So let's go. Let's go ahead and go under the microscope for this. Um, running over something. Alright, cool. So, 
this is the iPhone 10 board uh, let's remove this foam so we get a better look at the board and then um, so just a quick inspection um, you know the board looks fine there's no there's no real signs of it being uh, soldered on like somebody else tried to fix it so that's good that's a good sign very promising I'm gonna take this off too because it will melt through the repair process by the way um, for watching say what's up in the in the chat um, I want to see who, who who's in here um, you can start off by saying what city you're in what city and state and country um, and I, I get a lot of international viewers too so that's pretty cool um, so this uh, iPhone 10 is two layer design meaning there's one board up here and one board down here and it's connected through this uh, middle layer called an interposer uh, but in reality it, um, the bottom board so this is a, another board just for um, for example so usually what you're dealing with is actually two two layers so something like this where you have the top layer and then the bottom layer with the interposer so you never really take off the interposer the bottom layer is as one piece with the interposer so just keep that in mind even though it's technically three pieces we only separate uh, using two and uh, something just fell all right so just a quick inspection we want to look at the separation from the top layer and the interposer so in here um, that's usually where it separates so all this looks good there's no big gaps no visible gaps um, let me start on this side so all this looks good I see I got some Australia Colorado Springs what's up guys thanks for joining um, so yeah all this looks good but then this is where the problem will lie see how there's like a gap right here so this gold part and then the bottom layer so this is uh, this is a problem right here actually so let me just um, let me show you why so I had mentioned there was uh, Wi-Fi issues Bluetooth issues and no service and probably related to this but this is basically how you can diagnose a broken bottom board um, just give me one second I'm pulling up ZXW which is on my other screen which is way across the other side but all right let me switch to ZXW all right so so on the logic board uh, we're dealing with this corner so here on the on the board this gap is these these pads right here so if we zoom in we got PMU AMUX something which goes to I guess PMIC so that's some power line um, this one codec to speaker amp I don't know if you guys can see that codec to speaker amp so it probably has some speaker issues that I didn't notice uh, PMU to BB USB V bus detect so PMU is power management units BB is baseband so probably this is why, why it's having no service um, and missing a power line power rail uh, PMU hydro uh, so basically it's some random this is probably what uh, you could use to force it to DFU mode uh, a little further up we have AP to BT wake that is basically uh, the CPU and the Bluetooth communication line um, so that's all here in this corner 
So if we just keep going down the line, we'll find, um, you know, WLAN, that's uh, Wi-Fi, basically. Uh, so that's Wi-Fi to CPU time sync. Um, so all these pads, if they're, if they're disconnected, you know, the, the top layer is the main board. So if the bottom layer cannot talk to the top layer, then you're going to have the issues we saw earlier. Earlier, so um, so yeah, and then one way I kind of test for this, I'm not because sometimes it's hard to tell if there's a gap. So I just kind of I can see a bend like that, and that's basically the issue here is that when the phone drops, you know, it gets bent, it bends like that, and it breaks. It actually breaks the the bottom board, so this gap shouldn't be here. Um, so. We're gonna go ahead and get this uh, bottom board swap part party. Crap, bottom board party started. So what I like to do is this is my uh, customer phone board. So I'm gonna name it um, customer initial, which is R R R. Okay, I'm gonna name. Put his, his initials on every piece just because I don't want to mix them up. So RR. I mean, it didn't probably wipe away, but at least I have it somewhere saved, recorded, right? And then we know it's the one with the gap right here. Okay, so this is a customer board. Then uh, I have some donor boards here that we're going to use the bottom boards from. So. How do we know what kind of bottom board we can use? Uh, first, we start off by identifying which, um, there's two versions of the iPhone 10. There's uh, Qualcomm and then there's the Intel. So one neat trick that um, I learned from Aaron Harrington is that the one model, so like, I don't remember which is which. Once we split it, we'll see. Actually, let me use this other one as a reference. Uh, all right, so this one, you can see this this chip right here is like long ways up and down, which is the same thing we have here, long ways up and down. So that means this is a Intel. So the Intel is a rectangular uh, baseband, whereas Qualcomm is a square one. I don't think I have. Yeah, I don't have an example here. But I do have this example. So Qualcomm, you can see the this chip is left and right. On Intel, it's up and down. So we're dealing with a, this is my customer's board, RR, right? So um, up and down is Intel. So I got to get an Intel board, bottom board to do the, the job. And so I got some donor boards here. So these are all Intel, you can see. Uh, up and down, up and down, this chip right here. So first, um, let's let's move over to, let's go ahead and, so one of the steps I gotta do is um, unbind Wi-Fi. So let's go ahead and move to this bench first, um, just because I wanna get this out of the way before I forget. Um, let me turn the camera a little bit. All right, so what we're gonna do is reassemble it real quick. We're gonna use uh, the iRepair P10 uh, DFU box NAN programmer thing. So using purple mode, we're gonna um, unlock the Wi-Fi through the NAND. So first we gotta reassemble this. So this video is going to be step by step. I'm, I'm going to explain as much as I can about everything. So it's going to be a long video. All right. So this is the iRepair P10. You can get it from a lot of places. I think I have this actually linked in my description of this video. Um, uh, it's a great tool for uh, anyone who does Wi-Fi replacements. Um, 
and iCloud unlocks, but that's a little different topic that I will not talk about here. Uh, but Wi-Fi unlocks, this is basically what you gotta do. You plug this in, and then, um, let me put the laptop in view. So the reason why, why I gotta use the laptop is because for some reason, my desktop does not uh, recognize this thing, so I don't know why, but whatever. I got plenty of laptops here, so. All right, so trick here is you gotta put the phone in DFU mode. So let me close this out. Let me open. All right, let me see if you guys can see. So this, I'm running iRepair P10 software version 3.6, which supports almost every device um, imaginable. So basically 6S to iPhone 8 to iPhone 10. So, I see someone is here from Mars and Kentucky. <laughs> um, all right, so this is how it's plugged in. So the iPhone with the little blue, uh, white and blue cable to the eye repair. So the bottom of the R is pointing to the phone uh, through an I a standard iPhone cable to the laptop. And then we gotta put this in DFU mode. So every model or generation seems to have a slightly different uh, method for iPhone 10. You do click volume up, down, hold power for uh, 10 seconds, and then I didn't count, so I'm just gonna guess. Press and hold volume down and power for five seconds, and then let go of volume of power and keep holding volume. Let's see if this works. Nope, didn't work. All right, so let me go ahead and do it again because I need to count out loud because that's the only way I've been able to, to do it. So let me put the volume up so you guys can hear. Oh, this is really annoying. All right, up, down, power. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Volume down. One, two, three, four, five. Let go of power, and it should uh, kick into DFU mode. Nope. Nope, all right, let's do it again. Up, down, power. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Volume down. One, two, three, four, five. Let go power. One, two, three, four, five. You can see my face in the screen. <laughs> uh, let me see, let me make sure all the cables are plugged in maybe. Plus this has a aftermarket charging port, which I've seen uh, weird stuff happen. So let me try again. So, so up, down, power. Now this time I'm, I'm gonna press volume down as soon as the screen shuts off. Volume down. Three, four, five, let go power. And let's see, if this works. I've noticed the timing is different um, if the device is on the home screen or if it's on recovery mode. Um, all right, <laughs> sometimes I go through this like, like 10 times. All right, up, down, power. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five. And then pray that it works. It didn't. It could be the housing. Let me see. Up, down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. 
Yeah, I gotta slow down. All right, let me count slower. It's like so annoying because you gotta be like perfect sometimes. All right, up, down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five. Nope. Oh. Even boot it up. All right, let's do this. Up, down. One, one thousand. Two, one thousand. Three, one thousand. Four, one thousand. Five, one thousand. Six, one thousand. Seven, one thousand. Eight, one thousand. Nine, one thousand. Ten, one thousand. One, one thousand. Two, one thousand. Three, one thousand. Four, one thousand. Five, one thousand. It could be the housing. Yeah, nope. Let me let me see. Do I have an iPhone, another iPhone 10 here? Give me one second. No. Uh, I knew I was gonna run into something weird like this. Oh, here's one. All right, I'm gonna steal a housing from another customer, and then, because this this is something something weird's happening. Because I'm seeing the Apple logo flash for one second and turn back off, um, and then just for your guys' reference, I'm doing this first just because after I after this, I won't be able to do the Wi-Fi unbind until I'm fully done. And then I can't really test Wi-Fi until it's fully um, soldered and everything, and you know, this makes it a pain. All right, so I got another house in here from a different customer, which appears to be OEM. This other one appears to be a aftermarket. Uh, so just to rule that out. Like I said, it's gonna be a long video, and this is, you know, kind of what I deal with um, with these repairs. Oops, someone dropped it. So sometimes people ask, like, I, I'm charging, I charge two hundred dollars for bottom board swap for repair shops, and two fifty for end users. People like ask me, like, oh, can you give me a better price? I'm like, nope. This is a very time-consuming repair, and I'm not. And it's not always successful. I could, at the end of this video, it's like, oh, you know, something's not working for whatever reason. And then, you know, um, you get you waste a lot of time. So I gotta make up for all that. All right, cool. Let me uh, try again. Yo, I see Edgar's in here. What's up, man? All right. All right, it's in uh, recovery mode. So up, down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five. And there you go. See, first try on the new housing so if you can see here it's gonna be hard to see in that corner once it focuses dfu well so this is chinese software they put a dfu model but it's actually dfu mode so once you get in dfu mode what you do is you click a button and you click there it goes. And then it does start doing its magic, which is uh, purple mode. So you'll see here on the screen um, some weird colored 
Um, so basically, this is uh, using a, a jailbreak, getting into the deep into the system somehow, doing some, you know, some magic to get it into purple mode. There you go. We got a. Is that turquoise? On the camera, it looks turquoise, but for me, it looks green. Uh, all right. So this is purple mode. So what we do here is um, there's a button that says unlock Wi-Fi. So you click that. I click it a bunch of times, and then you'll see it says untie Wi-Fi OK. So we can be sure it is unlocked. So now we can replace Wi-Fi freely without uh, any issues. And then once uh, once you do that. You have to click. Sorry, this is kind of kind of ghetto, but you have to click exit recovery, and now the phone has uh, restarted. So um, that's a fun learner, learning experience that a bad aftermarket housing can make it difficult to uh, get into DFU mode. So keep that in mind if you're having trouble. So let me move the laptop out of the way. Move all this stuff out of the way. All right, so I got that out of the way as well. Where is my spudger? Cool, we got 12 viewers. Who's gonna stay till the end? I'm telling you, this is gonna be at least two hours and I'm in Pacific time, so it's 8.30 p.m. Uh, what what time zone, what time is it uh, where you guys are? Because it's gonna get late. But it's Friday night, you know, good time to do, good day for a bottom board swap. All right, so let's go back uh, over here. 10.30 in Texas. Cool. All right, so first step, let's just take apart this board just to um, make sure there's no broken pads. Because there's a lot of broken pads. It might just be um, not worth the repair. All right, so I'm using a mechanic. Uh, I don't know what this is called. Basically, a, a board heater. Let me change the camera. So this will. Uh, I need to rotate the camera. So this was basically going to heat up. Um, well, you know what? Does it that warm up? Let me test my donor boards. Uh, meanwhile, so let's go back to this this camera. All right. So I got three donor boards. Confirmed their Intel based on that little uh, the little chip. So what I like to do is get get me charging ports. This is OEM premium from uh, Mobile Centrix. All right, so let's uh, test one at a time to get find us a working um, bottom board. And I'll show you what to check for each one. So all we need is a port, a battery, and a screen, and a charger. So let me move. So I'm going to test my known good screen, my known good battery, and uh, my charging port, and plug it into charge because that will prompt it to boot. Um, also, it's very important to always have a known good battery, uh, just because I actually have these two other batteries that were my known good, and they failed me uh, just the other day. Um, I was having charging issues, and I was wondering like why wasn't it working. Turns out my battery had gone bad. All right, so here, let's uh, take a look. So the phone turns on. Uh, we got touch, and then. We want, you know what, let's do this. Let's plug into 3U tools. 
So let me show you guys. Let's go here. So meanwhile, I'm doing this. Um, we have the board heater here on this other side, um, heating up the sandwich. Why didn't it connect? By the way, these are iCloud lock boards. So they're basically parts boards. Um, why isn't it connecting? Oh, here it goes. All right, uh, so if you guys, that's strange. You know, I think I'm stretching out the cable. All right, so, or maybe it disconnected. Hmm. Let me reopen it. Yeah, so this is uh, some fun stuff, right? Very exciting. I wonder, I keep hearing the computer disconnect and reconnect. Cause I have like five cameras all plugged into USB. I have like so much USB uh, peripherals that could be the computer can't handle it all. <laughs> so strange, why isn't it picking up? Uh, let me just try one more, let me try iTunes. Uh, it's not detecting. Maybe it's the phone. I mean, it could be. So I guess this stream is going to be longer than one expected to because having technical difficulties and, you know, this is just what you got to deal with. Hold on. All right. I'm plugging in another board that I have verified is the Intel version. Or maybe my cable went bad. Let me go back here. I prefer 3U tools just because we can see more data. Oh, look at that. Trust screen. Oh, this is probably not restored. Or it is. Look at that, this one has no touch. And the connector's plugged in. Yeah, see that was a bad, uh, bad donor board to get the bottom board, so let me Get another one. This is why it's important to just to test because you could end up uh, doing a bottom board swap and then you're swapping to a bottom board that's broken. Um, so it's kind of part of the, the process. It's always a good idea to have a ton of these, especially because this issue is super common. All right, so Plugging this in. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna go back to the first one just to. I mean, the board looks super clean. Doesn't look bent. The OEM uh, foam is still there. I don't know why it's not. It connected for like a second. So I don't know. Maybe it's my PC. If anything, I, I'll try the laptop. So. By the way, if you're watching the stream, um, do me a favor and share this uh, share this online. You know, with your with your repair groups. You know, Facebook or uh, there's also some WhatsApp groups and as well. Oh, look at that disabled. But we can test touch. I can see touch is working. Problem is, I can't see. Um, 
can see baseband that's unfortunate actually I do I could see the little icon just trying to search so uh, you know what let me do this so I have another cable this cable forces the phone into uh, it's, it's called a magical cable so if you turn off the phone and turn and then so like in off was off state you plug in this cable and then it'll force it into recovery mode uh, what that means is look at that that means I don't have to do the button pushes or anything which is very useful right now because it's not in a housing so let me uh, so you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and restore this so you can see here it's in recovery mode go flash uh, let's just do 14.4 iOS and we're gonna do quick flash this is a restore this is gonna wipe everything on the phone this phone is in uh, on the disabled screen so I'm just gonna uh, quick flash so I'm gonna let that let that run while I go back to this one so this has been here for a while usually it takes about five minutes for for this to warm up so let's go ahead and get started with the actual sandwich top layer removal uh, so one thing I forgot to do is slice this sticker so I could separate the board. So what I do is just with an exacto blade number eleven, let's separate that. This uh, is this spot right here. All right. So this is where the exciting part uh, comes in. Uh, if you're watching, you can look at the bottom left corner. This is where uh, you probably can see what I'm doing. Is so I'm using the iNeasy uh, tweezers from Kianli, Chanli, I don't know how to pronounce it. They have really fine tips, but they're kind of strong. So I'm going to go into this corner, and then grab it and lift it up. And hallelujah, there's no broken pads. So what that means is uh, usually if there's broken pads, you'll see um, like some brown circles but we're seeing these are all silver which means it's all intact and means um, there's no no damage to the physical board on well the more the important one is the top board so is there nothing on the bottom board I mean the top board pads do not come off and stay on the bottom so this is uh, what it looks like um, this is the main CPU this big uh, big chip right here uh, this is Wi-Fi this is baseband there's also a chip right here called EEPROM baseband EEPROM which needs we need to transfer the data to the new bottom board so I'll show you guys how to do that as well so uh, first step here is to clean off this black stuff this is like the thermal paste kind of stuff um, I just remove it because if it gets on the pads it just makes a mess and it's very hard to you can't solder if the pads are dirty and it just like crumbles into like sand basically so I use my my hook to, to scoop it up and then I just throw it away so uh, meanwhile uh, the other board is still restoring so so I also like to remove it off the bottom board just because I'm going to be working on this. Um, it's important to also like do multiple things at the same time just so you don't waste time. You don't just let that phone restore when you could be, uh, basically you want to multitask because I think the fastest I've done one of these like without when everything goes smooth and just got to do all the steps it's in like an hour but since I'm streaming it you know a lot of talking 
maybe I'm not going as fast as I normally would. So I'm estimating two hours. Uh, let me see. We're 51 minutes in. Oh man. All right. See, there's uh, Miami, Florida. What's going on, Roger? Billy in New York. See, Ben has joined. What's up, Ben? From Profixer. If you're not subscribed to his channel, you should. He has a lot of uh, great tutorials. Uh, all right. So uh, let's go ahead and what should we do? Let's go ahead and remove um, baseband. So this is where the fun part starts. So let me just go down to 300 and let me move the my bottom, I mean my top board off to somewhere safe. All right, so as, also before I forget, see how I labeled the sim sim tray? This is that way I know this from the top view, now that I separated that this is my customer board. So this is the important, um, this is like the chip we want to save. It's going to be transferred to the new bottom board. So let's go ahead and just uh, clean off the underfill around the edges. So if you can see, my temperature is at 300 Celsius with 65 air. I'm just going to... I mean, if anything, I don't have to be that careful on this one because uh, if I scratch the board, uh, you know, this board is going to be uh, trashed soon. So that part doesn't matter. It's on the donor board, the new bottom board, where you got to be real careful to not destroy it because you're going to need it. So. So the reason why we did the Wi-Fi unbind um, is because that just means we don't have to transfer this Wi-Fi. Before, you know, to do uh, Wi-Fi unbind, you had to remove NAND. So it's just easier to just swap the Wi-Fi versus removing NAND and then, um, I don't know, just it's a lot less risky swapping over Wi-Fi, which we still have to do for iPhone uh, XS, uh, XS Max. All right, so now that the underfill is all clean, cleaned up around it, I'm gonna do, go to 400 Celsius, uh, 100, 100 air. All right, so. I use high heat here, and then I gotta find the spot to come in at. Let me rotate this. All right, so I'm going to come in. So see here, kind of hard to see for you guys. See, there's like this little gap right here. And right here. There's like no components there. It's kind of hard to see because some some of that thermal paste, but. Let's heat it up and then with my hook I'm going to slide under and then just oops, going to slide and then use the side of the board as kind of to get some leverage. Alright and then just pry this off. Yo what's up everybody I see some new people join. How many viewers do we got here? Oh, 14 cool numbers are growing I like that all right so this is the baseband chip uh, so this is see those brown pads uh, if we would have seen that on around the perimeter here on the bottom board then it would have been bad news but uh, it's not but here on this baseband there's some missing pads but most likely we're dealing with NC which are not connected so this is the baseband from our customer. We want to um, save that because that's the one we got to transfer. Meanwhile, uh, this other iPhone 10 is still restoring. So yeah, let's see. What was that number seven? 
Oh, oh look at that. Done. Let's give it a second to, oh, that's right. So I gotta unplug that cable. So it's gonna force it back into recovery. I'm gonna plug back into the PC. And it's gonna be in recovery mode. So I don't know if, how many of you guys know this, but this button, exit recovery is, um, uh, kicks the phone out of recovery mode. Um, you don't you don't have to restore it if the phone is functional and you're in recovery mode. Uh, the hook. Yeah, the hook is number seven from Kianli. I've been live for 57 minutes, but to be fair, the first 12 minutes I was just troubleshooting because my stream was like super laggy. All right, cool. So now uh, this, this is the donor board, this, uh, this one right here. Um, one thing is we want to look for is baseband. So right now IMEI is blank, which is not good, but click refresh and it should hopefully get that IMEI back. Looks like it's stuck. Uh, let me see. I don't know why. I think my computer. Yeah, there it goes. So you can see here there's an IMEI. So that's good. That means the bottom board is good. Uh, earlier we had tested, uh, touch is working. Um, also, if you click activate, that should give you, um, that will confirm your baseband's good, your NFC is good. These are all different things you want to validate that work. I think it's frozen again. All right, so the last thing you wanna to do to test if your board is good is uh, click activate now. Uh, let's see if it works. And let me get the laptop. So, Reason why is because if you're able to activate and get to the screen where it says, uh, oh, no, there it goes. So you always want to try to activate it. Even though it's iCloud locked, it getting to the screen where it says, oh, type in iCloud password. That means everything on the board is good and it's able to um, to to restore. So baseband's good. Uh, NFC is good. These two need to be good to to activate. If any of those two have issues, then it'll return back an error saying uh, cannot reach Apple servers or blah blah blah. So if you get a well, if it activates or if you get an iCloud login request, then you know it's good. Uh, anything else, then you know there's an issue, and this is not a good bottom board to use because there's an issue. Um, so, why is it taking forever? Hold on, it could just be the computer being weird. All right, so let me get my laptop. This thing's being weird. Uh, let's change camera angles. All right, this is my customer board. All right, let me open up. Let me move all this. All right, so 3U Tools is here. So I have none good cable. Well, I'm gonna plug this. All right, cool. So we have here, click activate now. Start. So I'm doing my best to try to explain every step so you guys understand 
you know what I'm doing and why so yeah you can see it's a uh, requesting an iCloud login so that means uh, baseband is good NFC is good uh, if you look here on the left touch is good I could unlock the screen it's kind of hard to see but Let me see if I could. The touch is good. All right, so this is a good candidate for a uh, bottom board swap. So let me put this away. Let me just clear all this clutter. All right, so this is my uh, replacement board. Okay, and then just for one quick sanity check, I'm mean, gonna see the DC power consumption. I wanna make sure there's no like partial short that's gonna ruin my day or ruin this three hour long stream. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just basically push power. All right, I don't have any current draw, so that's good. And we prompt to boot, we get like a 50s, like the first number was like 50 milliamps, 0 0.050 0 amps. So yeah, you can see the numbers are slowly gra uh, going up. So everything looks like it's good. There's no shorts or anything like that. So I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go, ah, I'm gonna go ahead and continue with the process. All right, so let's go back to this other camera. All right, so this is my customer bottom board. So I'll put this off to the side. This is my new bottom board. So just a sanity check, um, or I guess for for uh, comparison, if you remember the last board, there was like a gap on this bottom corner. So now you can see it's it's flush, it's like a straight line. In the previous one, it it was like kind of opening up on this side. Also, if I try to bend it, it doesn't create a gap. You see the SIM card tray bend, but it doesn't bend under that gold interposer. So this is straight. Uh, I, I do slight bend and it doesn't, doesn't change. So confirms um, our suspicion that this is a good board. And then get, to get rid of this. We're going to slice this. Oh no, what's this? This looks like it's dirty. Hope it's not water damage. Because then I'm screwed. Gotta get another one. And then just uh, another quick visual inspection. There's no gaps. Has not been worked on before. You want a virgin board because otherwise you're going to set yourself up for failure. We don't like failure around here. All right, so let's do this. Let's put this on the preheater to warm up. I've already sliced the sticker this time. So just uh, so you guys can see better, I've separated this. And we'll put this off to the side while we do a baseband reball. So this is a little, this one can be a little difficult. Um, so let's first start off by cleaning off the chip. So using the Kianli, do you guys know how to pronounce it? Is it Kianli, Chianli? I can, I don't know. So this thing, because all the flux is all hard to rotate. So I'm gonna put some alcohol in here to hopefully. By the way, I just opened up a merch store where I have t-shirts, hoodies, and a coffee mug. Um, you know what, I didn't add that on here 
let me add so if you check the description in one second you'll have a link to buy a t-shirt hoodie a uh, coffee mug buy some pcc board repairs merch ps uh the teespring all right and i'll post it in the chat as well let's save go check out uh some of our swag okay so if you like the shirts you can get your own now all right so we want to um, clean this off so I don't know if you guys can see but there's still some underfill on there uh, what I'm gonna do first is put some flux and then just run my iron over it so we have some some solder here I just some solder wire this is uh, you could find this in my the links in my description in the gear vccboardrepairs.com slash gear g e a r all right so i just ran over a lot of it with my iron this helps soften the underfill and then just add some leaded solder to the existing pads Oh yeah, and uh, if you're watching, if you're enjoying the video, smash that like button. That will help me get in front of uh, other um, other viewers who are into this kind of repair stuff and will really help out the channel. All right, so all right, let's use some heat, some hot air. I'm gonna go to like 260 and 65 air. By the way, I'm, I'm curious, do you guys prefer really long videos with step-by-step, -step, uh, tool review videos like the thermal camera video, uh, or like you know how to use a specific tool, or do you prefer like these long, super long, you know, step-by-step -step videos that, um, you know, are just live and go through the whole process? Because I can make, I can make them all but the live ones are easier to make because I just, I just go for it um, but they're unscripted or anything so sometimes I forget to mention stuff all right so basically what I'm doing is cleaning off this underfill uh, and then I think that's most of it Okay. I'm using isopropyl alcohol and a little hand duster, little torpedo thing. Saves you money on compressed air. Let's just go ahead and assume that's good. Make them all. Good idea. <laughs> Cool. So make sure you guys subscribe, like, uh, turn on the notification bell so you get alerted when I post a new video. Um, I'm getting close to 1,000 subscribers, so if you're not subscribed, make sure you do subscribe. If you like my content, the more... Uh, the more you guys support me, the more likely I make, I'll make more videos. So it's a fair deal. You even trade. All right. So I'm gonna use some hot air uh, and these ceramic inverted tweezers by Art of Repair. These help uh, with the wicking process because it absorbs the heat a lot better. It doesn't transfer to the tweezers themselves. So basically, I'm just gonna kind of wipe wipe away the solder 
And you can see there, it's the goal is to have a bunch of shiny pads. Um, So meanwhile, um, you're watching what, what is your micro soldering skill level from 1 to 10, 10 being like master micro soldering tech versus 1 is like you don't even know how to micro solder. Uh, post that in the chat, I want to hear, I want to see you know, who's in here, where, where you are in the micro soldering uh, scale. Take this for a better angle of these other pads. I would I would consider myself a solid seven or eight in the skill level. I know enough to do most repairs, but I, I don't know how to do a CPU swap. And I, I think it's just because I haven't spent the time trying to practice. Um, you know, it kind of very rare where like I'm gonna have a case where uh, it's like a data recovery and they need data and the only method is CPU swap or like I ran out of ran out of um, you know ideas and a CPU swap would co probably solve it so um, so I don't know how to do those yet because those are very risky and once you mess that up, then it's game over. Like nobody else can try it. So I'd rather just leave it. And if the customer decides to go somewhere else where they can do it, then they don't they don't lose that opportunity, you know. Alright, so check it out. All the pads are super flats-ish. Um, and it's clean, which is going to um, help. So let me get my clean cloth. And I'm gonna wipe it down a little more. So the important thing when you're reballing is your pads have to be super clean. Like no like no nothing bad. Uh, Alright, so there's iPhone 10, so let me get, a, get an iPhone 10 stencil. Alright, so this is the stencil I like to use for iPhone 10. It is from WL. WL, iPhone 8, 8 plus 10. These are all, this is the same CPU, which is uh, A11. So they all use the same chips basically, so you'll need one stencil for all these. Uh, the Why I like it, it's a 2D stencil, so it's like very, very thin. But the reason I like it is because the, the pads, hold on, let me move this a little lower down here. So the reason why I like it is the, the pad slots are very large, so it makes it easy to, to reball. All right, so to align it, what I'm gonna look at is a little pattern right here, like a little gap, it's like an L, and then like a, I don't know, kind of reminds me of Tetris. All right, so just find the matching orientation. And there you have it. One funny thing about the stencil is there's one cutout here that there's no pad for it, but it's still there. So, all right. So the tricky part about using a 2D stencil is that it um it can easily shift, and then you don't know until you finish reballing. So uh, I have a I don't know. I have a little spatula here with already some paste. 
So what helps when reballing is if your paste is dried, dry a little, but you don't want it too dry either. So whenever I reball, I, I just leave the paste on there and I leave it on my bench. And usually over time it gets better and better. But then at a certain point, then it gets worse. So um, it's kind of just a guessing game when it's good or bad. So let's go ahead and try it. So it looks like this this side has the most paste. So you just like uh, push down and spread it to the right. And then flip it over, spread some more. And the goal is to fill in every slot. Uh-oh, I can see the stencil shifting. I saw a little, I saw the pad was slightly offset. So hopefully I didn't mess this up. This is probably one of the hardest parts on this uh, rebound this baseband. For some reason, I just have a lot of trouble. So you might see me reball this two, three times. All right, so it's on there. One trick um, is if your paste is too, too uh, liquidy, too runny, you can use another towel to wipe off the top layer and it helps uh, like absorb some of the flux within the paste. All right, so I got my curved tweezers and I'm gonna press down. So now I have my fingers and the tweezers pressing down, which means I can now remove my left hand, which then gives me my hot air station. So I have at 330 Celsius with 35 air. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of warm it up from a few inches away. About one hour and 18 minutes. We've still got a long way to go. So yeah, basically I go in circles, circles. Once I start seeing the pace kind of doing stuff and moving around, then I get a little closer. And I like to start at the corner. All right, so yeah, this is not, not a good sign. See all the balls are in weird different directions. So let's see what it looks like. Yeah, I think the stencil moved. All right, let's see this disaster. Yeah, I think it was like way off. Let me poke this through. So what happens is the stencil will shift and not be lined up. Look at that. All right, let's start over. Uh, first is let's clean off all these all these uh, solder balls. Oh, it's fun stuff. So just lots of. Um, you basically have to poke them all out. They get stuck in there. Type a one in the chat if you've this has happened to you where you're trying to reball and then it's like way off. And you have to like fix your, your screw up. Run your iron over it. It's a good idea. I've, I've heard of that, although I think I've tried it a handful of times and never really worked for me. But Charlie, uh, I already cleaned it, so I think we're good. Nothing like messing up live on the stream. All right, let's go ahead and wipe this chip again. Put it back on the jig, on the eye pinch, Quan Li, Kian Li, Quan, Quan Li. All right, so this should be easy just because it has leaded solder now. I see some lint here. 
and it'll just be faster if I use my iron. So I'm just gonna wick it away. You gotta be gentle, don't press down too hard because then um, you screw up on oh, blurry. You can you can damage the top layer and then um, makes it hard to fix. Or you could rip pads, which is even even worse. All right, let me just a little more. All right, that should be good enough. So let's go ahead and uh, try this one more time. So weird because that could reball um, iPhone 6, iPhone 7, baseband's my first try like 90% of the time. For iPhone 10, iPhone 10s, 10s Max, it's always like two, three times. I don't know. Who knows what's going on? All right, so all right, let's just go ahead and pretend that never happened. So this is what you want to do when you reball baseband. Here, let me rotate it. I'll edit this out later. Just kidding. I'll, I'll just leave it. All right, so this way. What happened is probably when I was playing the play the pace, it shifted like that. So it's kind of uh, downside. So you got to be more conscious of. You know, just go a little softer on here. All right, still looks good. All right, let's go ahead and. From what I can tell, it didn't move this time, so let's try it. Um, I'm gonna have to run the paste over it again. So, um, no, I, I use three, I use 2D and 3D. Just sometimes the 2D ones have a better cutout than the 3D ones. So, just you know, over time, I figured out which ones work best for a specific job um, and I found this one works better even though I messed up and I have a higher success rate with this one versus some of the other ones oh yeah here you go see how how the the balls are centered they're all like exact same position uh, whereas before there were you kind of see the shiny spot was pointing in different directions uh, that's when you know you messed up, especially if um, if you can see the pad underneath, and then you see a little shiny spot off to the side, then you have bad news. All right, so then you, while it's still hot, poke it through. So I usually start with the corners, and then kind of poke it, poke, poke, and get it all the way out. And uh, look at that, it's three bulbs. So. Before I move on, let's go ahead and clean this for our next bottom board swap. So it works best when you clean it when it's hot because the flux comes off a lot easier. By the way, so I have that uh, merch store up now. I'm thinking of making like meme kind of style t-shirt design. So if you guys have any ideas, let me know. Uh, I already have some in mind, but I'll keep those secret until I, I make the design and post it. But it's gonna be fun, fun stuff. All right, let me 
right now I'm cleaning the chip uh, a lot of times there's like just a bunch of gunk by the way I still have that other board on the on the sandwich heater so the cool thing about that bottom heater is that it's just an on and off there's no temperature setting so it doesn't really damage the board because it's a kind of low enough heat that um, nothing happens all right so actually pretend you don't see this corner right here that is damaged uh, just pretend that's not there but this should be fine I mean it, it didn't go too deep so right now I'm scrubbing harder which lets me clear off that grayish layer that's on there all right let me clean this a little more oh crap I knew it Let me use my little cloth here. Put some lint. All right, can you guys see the? So you want to look for even, even balls. Uh, there's something off, right? Uh, I mean, it looks pretty even. There's some lint on there too. So I don't like using the clean cloth, because then you capture some lint. so I think this is good I say it's good enough so good this is uh, prepared ready to go on to the next step which is this uh, donor board which we're gonna get um, so kind of the same method grab this corner and lift up uh, everything looks good so this this board uh, is a donor board, so I'm gonna put it off to my pile of um, donor stuff. Then I'm going to clean off uh, the thermal paste. Like I mentioned before, this gets everywhere, turns like into sand, and it's like super hard to clean afterwards. So I like to keep it in big chunks. So, um, what's it called? I'm curious, who's, who's been watching since the beginning? Who's, who's been watching the stream since the beginning? Who's an, who's an OG? All right, it's uh, almost gone here. All right, that's good enough. So same as before, we're gonna go, let's do, this is 290. All right, so uh, trick here is to remove baseband because we're gonna put the new one that I just reballed uh, in here, so got to clean out the corners and be careful not to lose any components. Also, Wi-Fi is here that's underfilled, so you want to point the hot air away from it. Um, so just very carefully. I'm using an X-Acto blade right now. Number 11. 
so if you just search like surgical blade or exacto blade or something like that um, to be able to find it I don't know if I have it linked on my website I should though alright so this side is mostly clear let me get this corner alright that side is clear let's go this way so this underfill the reason why you want to erase the scoring it um, because if you try to lift the chip while it's still attached you can take up all these components uh, up with it and you don't want that so we're going to clean this top side What time is it? 9.26 so 9.26 here in uh, Vegas on a Friday night Yeah, I have the preheater on so it helps Just clean off this Gotta be gentle. This is your good board. You don't want to damage it. All right. Cool. That's clear. So now turn up the heat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it kind of far away so you guys can see. Uh, so I'm gonna do 400 Celsius and 100 air uh, with the preheater on, um, and then just come. From that same bottom top. Hold on, let me clean my hook. Still has some of that thermal paste. So just heat it and come up this corner. Oh crap! That's a bad angle. Let me rotate it a little more. I feel like I have a little more control this way. Alright, I think I bumped something, but nothing critical. Alright, so this is my donor board base mount, so I'm going to just put it way off to the side so I don't confuse it. Uh, let me see what I bumped here. Uh, that looks fine. At all float back in. You know what, let me just do it now. I think it's fine, but I'm just gonna heat it up a little. I'm gonna turn it back down to 480 air. There you go. That uh, should be fine. I think it's like a diode or something. Only two pads on each side, so. Alright, cool. So that part done. Uh, now we gotta clean this. We gotta prep the surface here. So what I like to do is just clean, uh, let's see, I clean this uh, underfill that's here along the edges. There's still a lot of steps left guys, so, you know, be patient, but so far everything looks uh, like we're or smooth what do you call it so far things are going smooth smoothly smooth so so yeah I wonder how many people are actually how many views I'm gonna get on this since it's gonna be like two oh crap we're already one one hour and 35 minutes I wonder how many people are gonna watch the full thing like my five minute uh, thermal cam video, like average view is like one, like almost two minutes. So nobody watches the whole thing, but I still don't want to learn about thermal cameras. So I like to clean out as much as I can this way. Um, 
No, I don't know what temperature is set to is set to uh, on Celsius. Probably like 150 to 180, I guess. No idea. So my my last live stream here on YouTube was an hour and 30 40 minutes and um, that was just a simple Wi-Fi repair I, I so what happened was the Wi-Fi the replacement Wi-Fi I had was cracked so and I had ran out of Wi-Fi chips so I had to pull from a donor and yeah I just took longer than I needed needed it to be so yeah so anyways while I clean this um, what are you guys doing with the with the stock market I bought some AMC stock at the peak apparently because it's gone down a lot but I also bought some Bitcoin and it's gone up so that's cool I think um, I think long term crypto is gonna keep going up. It's because you know the the dollar keeps going down in value due to the um, the Federal Reserve printing a bunch of money. So I think it's a safe bet to go with crypto. Plus, like if you think about it, the banks are super slow. Like just until recently, before Zelle. Like if you try to send someone money, it would take multiple days. And it's so dumb. Like, or like if you send it after hours, like it doesn't go through till the next day. It's just like, why is this so outdated? I mean, PayPal kind of helps solve that, but you know. All right, so yeah, there's still a lot more. This is the fun, tedious stuff. But, you know, you guys are getting a uh, behind the looks, behind the scenes look into my life in this soldering world. got most of it I like to get most of it just because once, once I run my iron over it it gets like the the texture gets different and I feel like when it's in this natural texture it's a lot easier to just scrub it off like that let me pick off clean this all off By the way, this uh, this video delayed. Like I'm delayed maybe five, ten seconds. So sometimes I <laughs> I don't know what you guys are talking about because it's already been been uh, a few seconds. All right. Um, so there was a setting on YouTube that said basically I can get higher quality, but the delay. Is longer and then um, or I can do lower quality but then it's more real time with you guys in the chat so I don't know I kind of wanted higher quality but I guess it depends if, I'll, if uh, the video is going to be a lot of chatting with you guys so um, and my job here is to keep talking because then it gets weird if it's just silence All right, I think I got most of it. Let me use my little duster here. Clear it all out. Oh, 
Oh wait, this is a big piece right here. Also, good idea to clean off the stuff here by the components because sometimes it gets in the way. By the way, I'm not using a lot of force. I'm just like, and this stuff just comes right off. times where like there's like a little piece right here in the corner and the chip wouldn't sit flat and then just ruin my you know the I had to basically reball it again just because it wouldn't grab and then when I tried it to uh, basically had to lift the chip which then ruined my reball and had to start over All right, so I'm gonna run my soldering iron over pads with some leaded solder. Um, like always, the point of this is to clean up the old solder and then kind of apply some leaded solder, which has a lower temperature than the factory uh, lead-free solder, which is just like a government mandated rule, which is dumb. For, it's for the environment. All right, so uh, I think that's good. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is so I'm gonna use a Q-tip here so I could uh, target just this area I'm working on and not get this stuff everywhere. So I'm just kind of scrubbing in circles. Trying to pick up as much as flux and underfill. Alright, so you can see there's still some stuff in here. <laughs> yep, I ramble a lot, but I don't care. Maybe that's what makes me me. I don't know. Or maybe I'll edit them later. I'm, I have my wife edit the video, so <laughs> let's see if she'll take take this job on. Uh, all right. So get off, get all this underfill, the last of it. I think it's good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish this off by wicking the last of the solder, which should pick up some of the last of this uh, underfill. All right, I'm running out of solder wick, so I have to replace it soon. See, there's oh, 18 people now. So if you guys are watching, go ahead and share this. If you haven't already, share this in the different groups, you know, share it in my group, micro soldering for beginners, share it in the cell phone repair shop, repair shop talk, you know, share it in your WhatsApp repair groups, Telegram, Instagram, MySpace, uh, Snapchat, TikTok. Google Plus. Uh, all right, so I'm at 365 Celsius with 65 air, and the goal here is to wick the pads. All right, let me get some. You guys can can see them out of solder, out of wick. And it's all beat up, so I'm gonna need a piece. In one second. So I have this giant roll of solder wick. 
which surprisingly I'm burning through it pretty fast. Hey, what's up? Uh, hey, Jack. What's going on? All right, so I got a bigger piece of wick, solder wick. This solder wick is basically a piece of braided wire that's used to suck up some solder. Are you going to leave the end for open question and discussions? If you guys have any questions or anything, just ask me. I'll try to reply as I'm working here. Probably makes it more exciting or more entertaining if I'm answering questions. So I'm sure if you have a question, then other people probably have a similar question. All right, so I was gonna clean up some more. Some more solder. Goal is to get them as flat as possible, but also it's pretty easy to bump a component and then mess things up. So you gotta kind of balance the two. How long have I been in the industry? Uh, I guess technically 2016 is when I officially started like repairs because I opened a Yelp page, came up with the name and started offering repairs as a service. Before that, uh, 2015, I was doing a lot of eBay, Amazon selling uh, random stuff from like Goodwill and reselling it online. And I started reselling phones and I started buying broken phones like fixing the screen and then reselling them and then I was I was posting a lot of my work on like Instagram and Facebook so then like friends and well friends started like asking me like hey can you fix my screen so I'd fix your screen and they're like hey my cousin needs a screen fixed uh, so I started getting so many requests for like screen repairs that I was like you know what let me let me make it official so to speak and you know do repairs because it's a lot a lot easier to just have someone come to me fix their screen and then I make like 50 60 bucks versus driving to all these goodwills around the, the city only to you know sometimes come back empty-handed with no, no good deals um, or sometimes I would just I would I don't know, it was just more work to buy buy something, take pictures, make a listing, uh, and then just wait. And then once it sells, I got a package ship, um, you know, only to make like $20 after PayPal fees, shipping fees, eBay fees. So slowly transition to phone repairs. And then 2017, summer 2017, like June, is when I decided to try to learn micro soldering. Um, I bought all the equipment and then just started watching. Well, before that, I was watching a lot of like Louis Rossman iPad rehab videos and stuff like that. So then I started, you know, getting my equipment and like literally watching every single video I could find, joined every Facebook group I could find related to soldering. Um, you know, just and then just try to read every post. So you know, people post stuff like you know certain symptoms, and then like people will comment. So even though I I didn't know how to do a lot of these repairs, I was like reading every single post, reading all the comments, and then just kind of would practice. And so when customers would come to me with uh, you know the repair that was not just a screen repair, then kind of had some knowledge I would outsource it to some guy locally 
but then um, you know then I started learning how to do it myself and yeah just went from there I think 2018 is when I f got my first mail-in repair for uh, for a repair shop and then just went from there a lot of my first repairs were from customer phones like they they had like a no power issue or some random issue so I just buy the phone off of them I'll tell them like alright we could fix it but it's like 150 or something or I'll buy the phone off of you just uh, if I do get it fixed just you know do me a favor and, and give me the iCloud or here's how you log out of iCloud and then by the way I'm, I'm running solder over the sandwich pads the interposer pads because I'm a wicket right now um, but yeah that's kind of how I started Uh, yeah, I, I do have a course. It's not mine, but I'm the lead solder coach. Uh, it's a 90 day uh, program where we have two calls a week regarding soldering. And it's like Zoom calls, and then there's an online training portal with like, you know, that teaches you how to solder. And then the, the, the two calls a week are more to go over different techniques, methods, and then do Q&A. Um, yeah, so right now the solder tip is a BC, BC1, I guess, bevel, I don't know, it's like slanted, that is um, the soldering iron I use. You could find, find it on the link in the description under the recommended tools, I think I call it. Um, so the 90 day course is mostly for beginners. We cover a lot of, you know, like the common stuff, uh, touch IC, auto IC, TriStar, no image, VDD, VCC, VDD main shorts, stuff like that. Um, but also like, there's another part of the course, which is workflow, like how to optimize your repair shop so that you're not just, um, so you have your, your shop organized and efficient, running efficiently, and you as the owner aren't just, you know, fixing screens. You, you can delegate a lot of that stuff to your employees and stuff like that. So there's kind of two, two sides of it. So we have some, some students who join the course who already know how to solder, but they really wanted to help optimize their shop so they're, you know, profitable. Um, you know, you gotta have like a, a process down to to be efficient. Otherwise, you know, you can be wasting a lot of time doing stuff you could do. I don't know. Just it's hard to explain for me because I'm more of the solder coach, whereas Ben is the workflow side of things. Yeah, if you're interested, check out the link in the description or send me a message. I will connect you with Ben so he can like, talk to you and get a better feel about your shop and see if you're a good fit. All right, so I wicked all the pads. Um, you know, they're all flat. And now we gotta clean it. So this is a tricky part. You gotta put alcohol on your, uh, put a lot of alcohol and you're gonna do like swipe in one direction and then you see it's kind of on the q-tip and you don't want to reuse that same side because then you will stain the pads and then you're gonna have to clean them so you see how it's getting black so I just, I'm gonna go ahead and be safe and just grab another q-tip um, otherwise the pads get like oxidized they get like gray and it makes it hard to reball because there's no, there's like a layer of crap on them. Yeah, as far as the solder iron tips, I, I literally just used two. Like I, 
I don't, I don't remember the last time I swapped them. I used the bevel as my main like large iron and then the uh, J tip, like the curved tip for um, like jumpers and well for my micro pencil. All right, so you guys see that? I have, see how like this burnt flux is on the Q-tip, but the pads on the, on the board are super shiny. So this is kind of just something I learned just from running in, into this so many times. If you try to just clean it with like a toothbrush or something, the, the old flux would just burn and stain the pads and then you have to go and like literally scratch off the top layer because it won't uh, I guess it won't solder well I guess all right so here's just a quick inspection see how that is clean and shiny this is what you want you don't want the gray like a dark gray because uh, that it means it's oxidized there's a pad right there that's not wicked, but whatever. Uh, that's a ground pad anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, see how these bottom ones look a little gray? But those are ground, so I think we should be fine. All right, cool. So we have the wicked baseband pads, we have the wicked interposer pads, and the whole time this thing was on, so we're gonna turn it off now. We're going to take off this bottom board. All right, so this is and what's before I forget, let me get a picture in for social media. All right, so once again, I have this labeled RR, which is customers. This one's RR, can't see it, RR customer. So let's do it this way. And I have my baseband over here. So I'm just gonna grab my phone because I probably have a thousand notifications. All right, cool. Let me get a quick picture. Probably use it for my thumbnail. One trick is if you are taking a picture like this, if you tap, well, this on the Samsung, if you tap and hold, the brightness setting comes up and then you dim it. And then you could uh, get a better, better look. So I dimmed the brightness and we got this. Yeah. I don't use iPhones because I know all the problems they have. <laughs> Why would I use a phone that has so many problems? All right, so let me put baseband out of the way. Put the main board top layer out of the way. Now we're gonna do what is called EEPROM read and writes. So if you guys do uh, screen repairs, I'm sure you know. Um, I use a Note 20 Ultra. Um, so if you do screen repairs, you know how you have to copy the data from the old screen to the new screen? Similar thing as we're reading the EEPROM data, which is what you do on the screen as well. EEPROM is like a little, little glass chip. Um, the thing is, um, very risky to just solder to transfer the chip. Uh, here, let me show you real quick. So EEPROM, baseband EEPROM cannot be replaced. If you mess this up, 
it's game over, base man gone forever. Uh, so this is it, the little, little square guys, four legs. Um, so those are super easy to, to lose or to damage, especially on the Qualcomm boards. They're underfilled. On Intel, they're not. Uh, Qualcomm is underfilled, so imagine trying to take off the chip underfilled without losing it. It's just not, not uh, ideal. So I have a read and write programmer here. Uh, this is the JC Pro 1000S. This is the, the hub. And then I have the adapter for iPhone uh, 10, Qualcomm, and, and Intel. And then, um, so what we got to do is get, this is my customer's board, RR, right? We're going to put that, this is Intel. So we're going to put that here in this slot. Just like that, face down. You hear that beep? That means that it can detect it. So I have it like that. You see RR. This is why you label the device on both sides. So you like, cause you, you, if you write the wrong data onto the original one, then you lost that data forever and this game over baseband will never work. You cannot recover that. So this is customer data. We need to read customer data and transfer it to the new donor board. So keep that in mind. All right, so detected IIC chip. Ignore the bad paradigm. So you guys can see. So we click read. And just to be certain, I read multiple times. Because, all right, read. And then we swap out the board. So this is RR. This, you got a 100 times check. This is my customer, I mean, this is the new bottom board, which is, does not say RR. This is the one that's wicked, so we know that. So we put it in the same. Okay. So detected, and then we burn, which is, do you want to uh, burn or write? So writing, write complete, burn, sure, write complete. All right, so we've written data from the old board to the new board, and in theory, it should work. So now both the original board and my donor board have the same EEPROM data for baseband. So this is RR, let's get this out of the way. Let's go back to this one. All right, so this is my, so now we're gonna place, here, let me take out this foam. Lemon viewers, cool. Uh, we still got a lot of people. If you're watching at this point, if you made it this far, two hours and five minutes uh, write hashtag live I want to know who's, who's watching live um, plus you'll be on on record that you're watching live to this great events I don't know if anybody else has posted a full bottom board swap video like step by step I could be the first one but then again I didn't look so all right so Turn on bottom heater, and then yeah, see how some of these pads are kind of gray. Uh, that's what an oxidized pad looks like. So, well, I see three people so far. All right, so I mean these pads should be fine. You can, you can scratch them out to help out, but you just gotta be careful when you're scratching 
uh, the pads because you could sc scrape out some ground plane which is not good uh, so what I like to do is just top layer just in case rather do this now and only do this once see I see some questions uh, if it's uh, do you offer schematics and manuals no I don't you have to uh, find those on your own although if you get ZXW and you install microfish which is kind of tricky um, it does come with schematics also if you get uh, Wixin G W J W X J or something like that. Uh, that I think that also includes schematics but I found all mine through Google searches and then just save them on Google Drive so I always have them uh, but I heard it's like illegal to share schematics I don't know I mean how would you who, do, who would you ask? I'm not going to hire a lawyer and ask. Alright, so I think these are pretty shiny. So, just to be sure, I'm going to clean off some of this old flux. Because we're going to uh, install baseband right now. There's, there was one time where I did all this and totally forgot to do EEPROM. So I had to lift baseband so I, I could read with the programmer and then uh, for it to work. Um, because the, the programmer plugs into some of these pins that are connected to the EEPROM, so that's how it works. Oh, that should be good. All right, so let's apply some flux. Okay, let's get my baseband. Actually, let me double check orientation. All right, so let's look at baseband here. So the little triangle here, little orange um, corner, that means that is where pin, pad A1, which is the first pin, which is the direction the chip goes so on a lot of these chips there's an indicator on the bottom so if we so we know it's upper right so we go here there's a little triangle right there at the corner that is a1 if you flip it over there's another there's a dot here in the same don't confuse that dot with the little circle that Intel chips have on the bottom left, like an oval. By the way, before I forget, um, there's some sometimes some gunk here on the sides that gets in the way too. So let me slice it off. All right, it should be good. All right, the chip looks good. I, th I see some lint. Whether it does anything, I don't know. All right, so chip is ready. We got This looks weird right here. Oxidation. Yeah, it's, see how it's oxidized. I waited too long. Miss. Uh, man, I wish there was like a 
brush or like some some tool that you can scratch off this top layer without damaging the surface and mask like the factory like mask I guess you know what let's just let's just send it So like in ZXW, this dot goes on this. So this is what ZXW is like, the orientation, and the dot's in the upper left. So let's go ahead and lay it that way, and then come back to the more comfortable angle. And let me get rid of this stray pad. Okay. So are you guys ready to install this? Right, so what I'm doing here is trying to align it as best I can based on the visual cues like the spacing between the surrounding components uh, looks a little too high up I'll push it down all right you guys see that see the spacing is pretty even on both on all four sides uh, And I'm gonna do really low temperature. Um, so I'm at 330. This is basically my reballing temperature. Um, just because I have a bottom heater, and this thing seems to not take that much heat, require that much heat. So I'm at 330 Celsius with 35 air. By the way, can you guys even see that temperature on the quick on this screen? It looks pretty blurry to me, but I don't know. So I'm, I'm pointing the hot air away from the Wi Fi uh, just because it's underfilled. So here I am. Pull on at 13 likes. You guys think we get to 20 likes by the end of the stream? Let's see. All right, so I'm gonna, I turned up my heat because I didn't see this chip move. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the capacitor here as a, kind of like when you're playing pool and you use your fingers as a guide. And you can see the chip is settled. Um, all right, so turn off bottom heater, unhook the hooks from the, I hold the board down. And this is uh, how I lift the board. I go under the sim tray. Then I get my handy dandy steel block to cool this thing down. I just realized I slammed the board kind of hard onto this, onto this block, so I hope I didn't mess anything up. So let's see what happens. Sweet, 15 likes. Thanks guys. Uh, meanwhile, see these gray pads? This is kind of what you want to avoid. So the air number is blurry, but can you see the temperature? So right now it's like 105, 104, 103. Okay, yeah, you can see the temp. Cool. Well, just listen to me then when I say the temperature out loud. I need to figure out a better way. Probably get a. Probably have, I'm thinking to get a better tripod so I can put it right up, right up against it. You should see my camera setup. So the cameras everywhere. All right, so bottom board, base original base mount from customer, uh, bottom board Wi-Fi, and everything else is from the bottom board. So uh, only the baseband and the EEPROM data was transferred. 
So I'm going to now test before I solder them together. So what I use here is a little jig. This is a little sandwich jig. It helps uh, basically, why is it stuck? Basically it um, forces the pins, the pads to touch each other through this thing. Oh, stupid camera. If you guys can see, there's like little. Here, let me go to the microscope. There's like the little pins that come out of both sides. So it connects the upper layer and the bottom layer together. Yes, ZXW is worth it. Yeah, pogo pins. And. It costs money to run a business and this is just one of the costs you gotta oh you know I forgot to wick this I'll do that after uh, alright so oops I didn't show you guys alright so this is how this thing goes you put uh, this is the bottom piece so you put the bottom board on there you put crap Flex made it stick. Yo, what's up, Polo? Nice, I'm at 18 likes. So almost at the goal of 20. All right, so the the bottom plates, the bottom board, and then this little interposer pogo thing on there. And then I need better cameras better software and then the top layer on top so so like literally a sandwich a little uh, plastic sandwich and then this top this top one will lock them in making contact with all the so now it's like if we solder them together but they're not all right, so we, what we got to do is charge ports and then screen. Oh, you know what? So we use a screen with a special adapter just because the way this is laid out, the regular screen does not plug in. You need a, this little extension cable, which is like a really awkward angle. Also, you got to feed the charging port through this cable. I wish I could zoom. You know what? Let me adjust this camera. Get a little closer. Should have done this earlier. All right. So we gotta run the cable, the charging port through the two cables. And then this is the tricky part. It's plugging in this bottom connector. Uh, oh sweet, 21 likes. Let's uh, celebrate. All right, so this bottom connector is really tough to connect because the, this thing gets in the way. So what I do so I try to just go in. So I try to squeeze like this to make it contact. Cause it's like if it doesn't make good contact, you're gonna get no touch. So it's a really awkward setup here. And then um, I use this little steel block to give me a little uh, stand to hold the battery. So now the battery's plugged in, screen is plugged in, charging ports, and then I'm gonna use. A charging cable. Let's use this one because it's within reach. Oops. All right, I'm plug this in to charge. Should prompt to boot. Or not. All right, let me double check something.
All right, let's try the DT880. This is basically one way to think of it. It's like a battery simulator. All right, so plug that in. All right, so we have four volts, zero amps, so that's good. And then, actually, let me unplug the charging port. Plug in this charging port from the DT880. So, prompt to boot. Oh. This is an Intel version, so it boots into DFU mode. Uh, you know what? It's not making good contact. Doesn't see baseband. So we have to. I'm gonna have to whip the top board. I bet you the the flux and all that doesn't. So there's two versions, right? There's an Intel and there's a Qualcomm version. Uh, the Intel version, if it doesn't detect baseband, it won't boot up. It'll go into DFU mode. Uh, on the Qualcomm, it will boot up if there's baseband or not. Um, let me see. Let's see, what are we at? Two hours and 22 minutes. I'm going to guess we're going to hit three hours. All right, so this part is tricky because I want a bottom heater. To warm up the board but there's no bottom heater that that I found that handles this shape so I'm gonna just use this plate as a uh, working surface so what I'm doing is putting flux all along the edge and since the oh look at that some that thermal paste here Maybe that was blocking one of the connections. All right, let's go back to what I was doing. So, <clears throat> I need, hold on, give me a second. Let me get some. I got a monster here. He's been waiting for me. So, let's put some more flux. So the goal here, like always, is to always run your iron with some leaded solder. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I went into DFU mode. The, the way I can tell is that it, the milliamps of D, on the DC power supply consumption the boot up consumption went to 40 something milliamps, which generally means it's in DFU mode, which then reminded me of the Intel versions will go into DFU mode. If no baseband is detected, most likely the top layer did not make good contact with the bottom layer through the jig, which then means it was probably the old flux that wasn't making good contact. All right, so this part is a little tricky. I kind of just, these are all ground pads, so it doesn't really matter. All right, just add a bunch of solder. Just keep rotating so that you're working at the best angle. Yeah, I used to watch Jerry Rig. Um, that's how I learned I would use use them as a reference when I'm like doing a screen repair, but um, that's about it. All right, so keep adding solder to your iron because that within the solder is some flux, which I already already did oops I was out of view um, 
All right, now the tricky part is, let me turn this off, add some more flux, and then we're going to wick. The, the tricky part of this is to wick, you require some pressure, which is going to move the board, which you kind of got to maneuver around it. So let me snip off old wick so we have a fresh piece. And this one I do with the iron. So if you can see, I just try to very gentle, otherwise the board moves. So let me just do it this way downwards. That's a so if anyone knows of a bottom heater for the top iPhone 10 top layer, let me know because I hate this. See, like I try to wick and I bring the board with me. All right, let me, like minimal amount of pressure, but since the bottom heater is hot, my iron is hot, you don't need that much, you need minimal contact for the wick to pick up the solder. So as you can see, this is a pain in the ass. So I'm only snipping off a chunk of wick. So I have like a brand new piece of braid to work with. All right, so just keep doing the same thing until it's all fully wicked. And then by the way, so the thing here we're gonna do is wick the top layer and then we're going to reball the bottom layer um, which is the grand finale I guess I know a lot of people have trouble reballing the sandwich um, but my technique is I would I would say I have a like 99 uh, like 95 percent success rate with the sandwich reball technique so if you stick around and if you smash that like button you will learn how to do my technique all right so the bottom heater is off light is off it's all cleaned up so let's go ahead and try to clean this so basically with toothbrush clean off that yellow ish residue which is flux and I'm using the needle of this thing to hold it in place but also be careful not to damage anything because it's a metal metal tip so anything that's fragile will, can get damaged um, Toothbrush is some bristles, so nothing really gets damaged there. But here, needle tip. By the way, I'm, I'm dripping out isopropyl alcohol as I'm cleaning, so I have you know, something to clean with. All right, so yeah, I mean that's kind of you know the board is gonna move when you're trying to to wick, and there's no. I mean, you could put it in a, in a stand, like a board holder, but then the board isn't as hot. So you kind of got to decide how you want to, how you want to do it. You want a cold board, but a solid, uh, being held solid, or you want a warm board, or it's easy to wick, that the board moves around. Oh wait, I got some over here. All right, so let me clean this up with my little napkin thing. 
So I'm just going to absorb some of that. Uh, have I ever replaced PMIC? No. I mean, I mean the only time was like uh, it was like a worst case scenario. And I told them like, I don't think this is it, but I'm just going to try it anyway. Um, and sure enough, it didn't solve the issue and I just, you know, moved on. All right, so you can see all the pads are shiny. There's a few gray ones, so let's go ahead and uh, scratch off that top layer of oxidation. Oxidation is not your friend when you're soldering. So this is literally like a super thin layer of oxygen, I guess. Um, basically, like rust in a way, I think. I don't know. I'm not a chemist or, or whatever to know the specifics. All right, some these are ground pads. So it doesn't really matter, but just for good good measure. Uh, all right, let's there's some flux here. Let me clean this off with a Q-tip. So wet your Q-tip first, like soak it, and then Uh, get rid of some of the lint. Alright guys, let's see if the phone boots up now. Uh, troubleshooting camera angle. Alright, so we have before I put the top layer, the little sandwich thingy. Got it all Sandwiched in. Let's plug in my screen with the extension cables. Plug in the bottom board, the touch. And then let's do the DT880 so you can see whether it goes into DFU mode or if it boots up. If the CPU does not detect baseband, it will go into DFU mode. All right, so on, no amp draw, so it's good, no short. Then prompt to boot. Look at that. See how the numbers are going up? We got an Apple logo. So yeah, the top layer was dirty with flux, so um, it wasn't, CPU was not seeing baseband, so it just went straight to DFU mode. Now we're getting uh, the, the numbers are going up and up. So that means booting up. We have an Apple logo. Uh, so we're good. Uh, hey, what's up, Cormac? What's going on? How's uh, Europe? <laughs> I forget where you are. Finland, I think. All right. So let's see. One important thing, if you're gonna be doing a lot of repairs, try to burn this pattern in your brain, like known good, boot up consumption versus bad. All right, yeah, no touch. Which of the connectors not making good contact. But, let's see, yeah, no touch. <sighs> All right, let me clean the connector because it, it didn't feel like it made a good click. With the socket, we only have to clean the solder and not reball, right? Correct. It's just, I wick both both sides, but technically, as long as the, the pads are clean, then you should be fine. All right, so most likely what's happening is this touch connector is dirty. Yeah, look at that. Some 
nasty gunk so let's go ahead and clean it so lots of ISO I'll just kind of gently rub the pins and gently blow it away So it looks there's some debris in there. So my blade is dirty. All right, so here's a a trick I learned from watching uh, Jason STS Telecom. Sometimes these pins get bent out of the out of the way. So using like a blade or like the Quanli hook, you could bend them back out. Um, so I, you go down and to the left, to the little pocket, and just kind of push down. See how this pin popped out? Um, so do another one. See, so this third one is kind of tucked in under the plastic. So if you push down, you do have to practice this because you got to know how much pressure to put. It's a little bit of muscle memory. Um, you can see, can you guys see the difference? Type of five in the chat if you can see the difference between the pins I bent out and the ones I didn't. This helps ensure you're making some solid contact. All right, and then either you could rotate the board like this. Why don't, let me just do that. Uh, I, I didn't feel confident in my angle. All right, so push. These aren't bending out that much. I guess anything is better than nothing. The touch was working before we mess with this, so who knows? This is that. So that helps make sure you know both sides of the connector. By the way, this is the touch connector. Oh my connector is dirty probably I've used this so many times probably collected flux from tens of boards all right so let's go ahead and all right that's good okay so let's go back oh let me throw the camera have to bring you guys with me all right so come back here stack stack these together all right sandwiched I just hope all right click and then the bottom one go ahead and well that felt much better I didn't yeah there you go I clicked so assuming the bottom board is good and is making good contact, we should get right here. Burn this pattern to your brain because it's so important. It's very similar on most iPhones. So see the number first number is gonna be like fifty something, forty something, and then fifty, and then eighty. Oh, you gotta hold this also. The prompt to boot. This is true with uh, the iPower as well. Uh, so prompt boot, Apple logo, and pay attention to these numbers. So 200s, 300s, 500s, 200s, 2, 3, 2, and then should ramp up higher. There it goes. Ish. 
So this is all normal, like known good uh, power consumption. Man, it's taking forever. All right, there you go. So face ID, yeah, I don't have it plugged in. Um, let me see. There you go. Look at that. So, how do we know baseband is good? It said no SIM. Remember, if you were here from the beginning, they said no service even without a SIM card installed. Uh, so there's that. So we could dial start pound zero six pounds. We get the IMEI. I want to show you that because it's customer's IMEI. Uh, we go here to settings, Wi-Fi, turns on. So Wi-Fi unbind, and I use the new Wi-Fi. Bluetooth is on, off. So Bluetooth is working. If you were here in the beginning, you see um, this was just spinning forever. So you see cellular says no SIM. Uh, so one thing that sucks is you can't test sound. And if you remember, there was a, uh, a pad that was related to sound, the speaker amp or something. But, uh, but yeah, look, check it out. Touch is working. Everything is working. So uh, we can't test everything. You, you know, you can't test the cameras. You can't test sound. Uh, we can't test tap Taptic Engine. So we're just going to assume it's good. I haven't run into a situation where that doesn't work. So let's just let's just go ahead and, and um, do the reball now. So since a lot of people like or want to learn how to do reball, let me go ahead and share this one more time uh, on my social media. So let's see, we are at two hours and forty three minutes. Let's see, live stream. Still going strong. I'm about to start the iPhone X sandwich. Uh, Revol. Join now if you want to watch. Uh, let me put the link. Uh, Also, please subscribe. All right, cool. Uh, let me post this. Let me. Oh my goodness, there's like a thousand messages here. Let me post to my story. Right, just give me one second. Um, I'm about to do a sandwich. Do an Sorry guys, I just trying to get some more likes, comments and subscribes, you know. So All right. Let's get started. So uh so good news is looks like we're gonna be successful. Um, like honestly, I've had maybe I've done maybe like 20, 30 of these bottom board swaps by now. Um, I would say like at least five have gone ended up as no fix. 
which means uh, you know I I couldn't get it working so either like usually it was baseband would stop working and no matter what I tried I uh, wouldn't work I had a few that was no touch like no matter what I did um, there was no touch okay so uh, this is not the one I need so here's the tools you need for uh, sandwich revol. Uh, this is the Kian Li. Why is it so shiny? Kian Li revol thing. It comes with supports iPhone 10 X, iPhone X, iPhone 10. I call it whatever it wants or 10, 10s, 10s Max. Um, supports both models. It's like a little platform jig thing in the jig it's magnetic uh, yeah touch can be a CPU issue so what you do you put the bottom board here you put the stencil there's like some alignment pins so So they line up the pins and then this thing sits on top and then let's go under the microscope so you can see you can see all the shiny pads um, so the first step here is to reball ply paste let me get my sandwich uh, paste which is this one it's the crap the so G-Long paste, I don't know. I, I got this one from, I forgot where. What is this bluish orange? Yeah, right here. Why is it so shiny? G-Long solder paste. There's links in my, in my website. So if you go to uh, the description of the video or you go to BCC board repairs, my tool oh here it is go to vccboardrepairs.com slash gear and then um, here let me type it out um, I have links to anything everything if uh, there's something you want to know what tool I use, let me know. I'll add it to the sites. So uh, what I do is I have a dedicated tool. So this is separate from the reballing one just because I don't want to mix the paste. This is a different type of paste. So I get a little scoop. And then I get my little spatula that comes with the... Oh no, this one, this one came with a different... Uh, reballing jig this is the Manta but it's any flat like, tool this is aluminum too so it's not magnetic which is important uh, so I apply it apply a little blob like that kind of spread it out so it's like that and I put this off to the side and then we come here to the board and just like any reballing you apply the paste you press down so I start off here in the sim tray just because it's flat like on this side there's no paste coming out and it's uh, you don't want the paste to fill into the sim gap this gap right here between the sim tray uh, sim slot so I start like this and I like angle it down and then I spread out like away. This helps keep the paste just on the stencil. And then just go like that. And then over here you can be a little more uh, less careful. You just spread it, sc scoop it, uh, just kind of go like that apply it to the goal is to fill in the, the little 
pockets um, with solder paste. By the way, if you're new to the stream, if you just joined, make sure you like uh, like the video, smash that like button uh, for the YouTube algorithm. All right, so apply some paste, scrape it up, apply some paste, scrape it up. So, all right, so this is pretty pasted up and then put this tool off to the side. So just for you guys, I will do a close-up inspection so you can see what it should look like. You are filling in the slots, the little pockets, or I guess whatever you want to call it, into the, into the thingy. All right, so there's no, like all, all the squares are filled in. Uh, if you see, if you're able to see through it and see a, um, see the pads, then you don't have enough uh, paste. So now we get the clean clean cloth, and you grab like you go use a corner, and with your finger you want to wipe away the top layer. So just flip it over. This helps press it down into the stencil and then take off that top layer. If you're doing this and the, you see it lift up a lot of uh, paste, you might have to reball it one more time, like apply more paste and then just do it again. You don't wanna, sometimes like you wipe it and it picks up some paste that it leaves like barely nothing in there and then when you reball, the, the ball is so tiny it doesn't, uh, doesn't work. Um, Okay, so now that that's wiped away, um, now it comes the uh, actual reballing, or I guess the, the balling part. So, uh, here, let me go to this camera. So we have this prepared, and this is the magnetic part. So just, so as you can see, there's like a, a groove for your hot air. So, um, so I had this this uh, stencil jig for a while, but I didn't use it much. And then I tried it once, and it wasn't working. Like I didn't, it wasn't reballing good. Like it was being weird. And then I talked to Cloudy Cloudy um, from where is he in Ireland. He told me the trick what to do is you go to four hundred air and max airflow so 120 so your airflow is maxed out and that's the trick here so because the the magnetic top is like holding the stencil down it uh, doesn't warp the stencil so you just uh, so what I do is just go kind of follow the outline by the way if you're if you've never seen this before Make sure you smash the like button to let me know. Or if you already smashed the like button, I guess type out hashtag never seen this before. Um, oh, sorry, I'm blocking your angle. See, 13 viewers. Check that out. All right, so just kind of follow the path, keep rotating it. It's gonna burn your hands probably, but part of the job, it's a dangerous job, you know? All right, so now you can see the balls are forming. So just keep moving. Try not to stay in one spot, because you're just gonna heat up a bunch of stuff. Um, So the stencil here on this side, I don't know, for some reason my stencil is like offset, but that's fine. It has enough uh, surface area to grab the pads, so now it'll fix itself after. You can see the pads are forming. So 
So I'm curious, who else uses a jig to reball the iPhone 10? Uh, there's also 11, uh, 11 Pro versions as well, which I have as well, and it works fantastic. All right. We have one hashtag never seen it before. Wow, 256, two hours and 56 minutes. By the way, uh, everyone, thanks for sticking around. I see a lot of you guys have been here since the beginning. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I honestly wasn't sure what how this live stream was gonna turn out. And I was a little bit nervous to do it just because so many things can go wrong and it's not fun for something to go wrong live on YouTube. So luckily I don't think the customer is watching so I don't think he knows that about YouTube channel so that's fine. <laughs> uh, but also I don't know I don't know if he would know this is his phone. Alright. So I've gone through the perimeter over and over, um, but it looks like it looks pretty even. I mean, all the balls look formed. There's some weird one right here. Oh, this is dirty. There you go. So what I'm looking for is, just like the last one, it was like a, like a weird color. I'm looking for the silver, like silver-ish look. That tells me there's a, a ball there of, of solder. But yeah, this is good. Plus it gave me time to cool down the board, the, the, the jig. And the, the funny thing is to separate this, there's like these little slots right here. So I just stick the back of my tweezer and just uh, rotate it to um, take it off. So with that, so I'm gonna do that same thing here on this side. This helps release the stencil. Alright, so I got this off, here's the board. So let's put the board aside and let's clean this while it's still hot. So this isopropyl alcohol and toothbrush. Very important to clean your stuff because um, that way you're able to right away get started with the next time you do this. Um, so go ahead and wipe this down and have this ready for next time. So one thing I like to do is zoom in and look at each uh, slot. What, what do you call this? I don't know. Uh, let's see. Little solder pocket. I don't know. By the way, what, what time is it where you guys are? Because it's 10.54. 54 p.m. here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Let's see who who's up the latest here. All right, and put that up, put this off to the side. Put this out of the way. So here's what the reballed bottom board looks like. A close up. So there's gonna be a lot of like flux and gunk, but the walls are formed. 
the important part. Um, oh, I'm out of view. So this is where the, the stencil was a little offset. So you can see it looks a little weird. That's fine because if I heat it up with some flux, it'll just shift into position. Alright, so I mean there's there's a ball on each pad, so that's the important part. Uh, the little square, I guess BGA grid, is um, fills in the same volume of solder paste. So once it forms into a ball shape, then it'll be the same volume. And so every pad is there, there's no weirdness. So let's just go ahead and uh, clean this. So some isopropyl alcohol, and just some toothbrushing. By the way, this toothbrush is a, comes like in a five pack uh, at Walmart for a dollar. And has made me thousands of dollars. So good, good R ROI. And it lasts like at least a hundred repairs. Like right now it's kind of dirty, but I think the act of cleaning also helps clean the stencil. I mean the toothbrush, which is pretty cool. Uh, no, I don't try to save the spacers. Those are long gone. The, the solder itself is what creates the space, but the balls are spaced out enough. And I don't know, it just, it just works. That's what I know. I remember the first time I ever tried to reball uh, one of these, um, man, it was a nightmare. I literally spent all day, like, the guy dropped it off a few days before, and then he's like, I was like taking forever to work on it just because I was like, it's one of those things where I didn't want to touch it because I knew it was gonna suck. And sure enough, it did. And he's like, all right, man, I gotta pick it up by Saturday because customers getting mad. So like Saturday morning, like maybe like 10 a.m., I started trying to reball. I had like two different stencil jigs and like I tried using both. There was like no real tutorials online or anything so I was just guessing how to use it. And like I would try it and like the the balls were all misshapen or the, the paste got in between and like had a wick both sides and then try again. And like I tried all these different techniques that I was just making up. And man, literally spent like 12 hours like redoing it, redoing it, redoing it. And then finally I got it. And I, like, hell yeah. And then next one, I like, I don't know what happened, but like, I guess I totally forgot the technique and I couldn't get it. And yeah, until finally I got a different stencil that was made it so much more easier. So I had like a 90 success, 90% 90, 90 success rate once I figured that out, which also took me a few hours, but not as long. And then, uh, and then I came across this one, this stencil jig. And then once uh, Claudio told me how to do it and raise the temperature, I just made a big difference. So that's my evolution in these Oops, dropped the kit up. All right. So let me clean up some of that isopropyl alcohol. So now what I'm gonna do is, oh, 23 likes. I don't know if that moved recently. Um, but if you guys can if you haven't and you're watching, make sure you smash that like button. We're at 23, can we get to 25? 
All right, so I'm going to put some, so I have the, the thing on, you see the light is on. Uh, I'm going to rub or apply, rub sounds a little strange. Uh, I'm going to apply some flux, like a very thin layer. Um, you can see the flux under a base band bubbling. Apply a very thin layer. The goal is to coat every pad with some flux. But you don't want to drown it. So like as the board warms up it's a lot easier. It gets easier and easier to apply the flux. So and just barely barely apply it. So here, let me zoom into those off those pads that are offset, so you guys can see what happens. So as the board warms up, you guys see that? See how you can see the pad and then a the little ball off to the side. So any second now, you'll see it warm up. So this is the fun part. This is, this is the one thing that does suck about the iPhone 10, like just reballing and everything is some of these steps you just got to place it and then wait. Um, it, normally I would do like set this and then go to work on something else and then come back. Um, yeah, the surface tension is what pulls it. There it goes. Look at that. Can I see that? Look at that magic. So that is uh, physics, I guess. Uh, uh, water dynamics? I don't know. I don't know the wording. If you know, it's surface tension, but what? Like what? Uh, science, I guess. I don't know. So you can see all the all the paths are super shiny. They're like bubbling kind of ish. So yeah, surface tension is what sucks up the balls and creates a uniform like dome kind of shape. Uh, and it pulls it to to position. Alright, so now what I do is I turn this off. I unhook it. I lift up the board and put it in my little steel block to cool it down here so you guys can see you see the pads are now no longer like bubbling or shimmering so so this steel block so this is uh, the law of thermal thermodynamics I guess uh, the steel block will suck up the heat because it's trying to reach equilibrium with everything else. So um, the block is cooler, the board is hot, so you try to like offset to line up with whatever else is in contact with, which is the air in the room, me, you know, all, everything's touching, so everything's constantly fighting to get to uh, like an equilibrium or something like that. At least that's my understanding from watching a lot of uh, what do they call like the universe about science and planets. So, all right. So this is prepped. This is uh, ready to go. So I'm gonna place it back on the preheater, bottom heater. Um, and then this is the tricky part. So we have. The board here this is a customer's board and then our goal here is to place it on the top layer while the pads are cold you don't want to try to place it while it's um, while it's hot because then you're gonna smash smash the solder balls and mess everything up uh, so first just try to line it up as best you can Yeah, I, I learned about the steel block through Justin Ashford from Art of Repair. One of his videos, he talked about it, and I got it, and 
definitely uh, helps out a lot. I actually bought two, I bought a little small one, two by two, and then I got a four by four. So, so the goal here is to line up the board. Uh, yeah, I would say it works better than a fan. It's, it's like when you touch it, it's just like cold for some reason. So, all right. So the goal here is to line up the top layer with the bottom layer. Well, actually, the top layer with the interposer. So you see how here on this side there's a gold. You can see like the gold from the interposer. So just try to look at every corner and make sure it's like even. Actually. You don't see any gold sticking out. So the gap here looks like the same gap from the factory, like the spacing. Um, so you just gotta eyeball it. It uh, does take some practice to kind of notice when it's aligned. And it also aligns itself once it solders together. So as long as you're not way off, then, um, then it should work. And yeah, I got the I got them from Amazon. It's on my website. If you scroll up a bit, the, the bccboardrepairs.com slash gear. I have a link there. Uh, if you buy through my link, I do get a small commission. So anyone who buys through my links, thank you. It really helps out the channel. Helps me buy more cameras for these live streams. So more cameras, more tools. Pay off my car, my mortgage. Stuff like that. All right, so I've turned this on, uh, and now we wait. So there's no easy way. You know, let's let me try this. Let me zoom in a little. Let me focus. Yeah, you guys aren't gonna see. Um, uh, thank, thanks, Marcus. Here, let me make this bigger. See if you guys can see a drop. I doubt it. You guys see that little gap from the top layer and the interposer? Uh, let, me, let me try something. All right, so now it's just a waiting game. Uh, there's a trick to check whether it's uh, the solder has melted. So I'm trying to see if I could get you guys to see better. Well, it's kind of hard to zoom this in more. All right, uh, let's see. Let's stare at this, at this little gap. I wish I could show you, well I guess I can't show you. So this gap from the top layer to the bottom layer. Top layer to the interposer. Oh look at that, I see it moving. Yeah, you guys see that? The gap just closed. So, one, so it looks like it has the solder has melted. So uh, one thing that I noticed is on this side by the sim sim tray, uh, oftentimes this part takes a little longer to to heat up. So what I like to do is push down on the sim tray to get it hotter faster, like you know make make more contact with the heat plate, and it helps uh, the solder liquefy. All right, so here's one trick. So I bump the top layer very, very carefully on this corner. You guys see that? All right, I need to like hold my breath and like concentrate. All right, so you guys see how the gap has closed up. So now let me go back to, oops, let me go back 
go back to normal view all right so just from this angle real quick so you guys can see what I'm doing is I'll so I'm resting my hand let me zoom out let me zoom back out not it so I'm resting my hand my palm on the table uh, this gives me some stability and then I squeeze the tweezers because that also gives me some stability and then I gently bump it you see that how it snaps into place so that is basically um, a surface tension keeping the two layers uh, together all right all right cool uh, so let's just do a quick visual inspection so you can see a little gold here from the from the interposer but it's fine because we well, there's some lint in there too so it's fine because we bumped the top layer it seems to snap into place so I think it's good so you can see it's an even gold line here which is I guess fine because that's how it lines up so as long as you don't see a big chunk of gold like it's like offset and crooked and they're fine these little pieces of lint annoy me all right so I think it's good so as usual let's go ahead and oh, three hours and 18 minutes let's go ahead and um, take this off so take off the little holders grab my tweezers grab it from under the sim tray I'll put this down I can use this one too so this is uh, I think what it's called a jeweler jeweler's block or something like that um, so you can see the difference in sizes uh, so the, the this four by four one I keep it off here to the side um, is because when I move it it's just easier to put it there rather than having this giant block in my way but for you guys I've um, put it here so you guys can see what I'm doing so as we wait, um, let me know what, what you guys think of the live stream. Should I do more? These are like three hour long live streams? Or what did you guys learn today? What was your guys' takeaway? If you could, someone asked you, like, what did you learn from this YouTube video? What's one thing you learned? An anvil. <laughs> All right. Um, let me clean off. While that's cooling off, I'm cleaning my tools here. Okay, put this away. I'm cleaning my little spatula tool. So I think the board is probably cool by now, but I just I just like to clean stuff that um, like if it affects my ability to use the tool properly because it's dirty, I like to just clean it now. So when I'm ready to work, I can just get to it rather than having to spend time trying to clean stuff. All right, that's clean. Put that away. Put this away. All right, so hey, uh, Micro Mage. I think that's Josh. All right, so thanks for watching. Thanks for joining. Uh, enjoy your night's sleep. I still got a few more hours to go for tonight. Got a ton of phones in line. <laughs> all right, so let's take a, let's do a visual inspection before we boot this up. You can see you can see the solder balls right there 
the even space. Uh, so just look for any weirdness. It's like really flat. So that's good. Now this is where you often see problems. Is like it is like separated, like it's curved or warped. This top board is like big gap here. Sometimes like all, a lot of these pads aren't touching, but you can see the pads. The board is flat, and solder balls are making contact with the two two sides. Uh, well, you can see, you kind of see there making good contact. No bridging. Um, yeah, the the stuff here at the end is ground pads, but um, on like especially tennis, tennis max. There's some important ones here on like towards the end, so I just like to keep it even. And then um, you can't see. It's kind of hard to see. I don't even think I can see it through the microscope. So we could just make an assumption it's good. Um, let's go check with the DT880. If there's any shorts, uh, like Isaiah said, you can check the VDD main. But I'll just do this. It's easier to show you guys too. All right, power, no current draw, so that's good. Amp stays at zero, so there's no shorts. Uh, push. Prompt to boot, you can see the numbers are going up and up. So it's not in DFU mode. Uh, that means it's booting up. So you remember this pattern from earlier. It's very similar where it's like the 200s and then works its way up over like a minute or two. So I, I say we're good. So let me start off by plugging in a screen by itself. So now I have hold on. one second. I couldn't see. Alright. So this is my old board. This is now plug in screen. Alright. Connector clicked. That's a good sign. So the DT880, you can do the same with the iPower Pro or iPower Max, I don't know. Uh, power, no shorts. Prompt to boot, 40 something, 80, 179. Come on. That's booting up, 300s. All right, it's really good enough. Usually I hold it for five seconds, but I don't know why I didn't at that moment. Oh, let's see. Look at that. We got home screen. We got I uh, got too excited and let me just reassemble. The power con boot up power consumption look good. So we can just assume it's good. There's no weirdness. We got to the home screen. So now let me reassemble. So oh, I see is that Jason Bain? South Bay Mobile Repairs. All right, so put everything in. These are 16 viewers, 24 likes. Sweet. Who hasn't liked this video? Shame on you if you haven't. We need one more like. Can we make it happen? Oh, you know what? I don't see if anyone disliked. I'm curious. <laughs> From this view, I don't see it. So, Let's see if there's any haters in here. 
All right, so screen is plugged. Well, OLED is plugged in. Touch is plugged in. Let's go ahead and plug in Face ID too. That's one thing. If it um, Face ID doesn't work, then I don't know what to say because it wasn't the sandwich issue. All right, so everything is plugged in. Uh, I reserve my opinion until the end. Fair enough. All right, so everything's plugged in. Let's go ahead, plug in a charger. So for whatever reason, I just uh, have a habit of, well, I have a preference to plug this in to charge to boot it up. I, I don't like pressing the power button. I don't know, I'm just weird like that. I'll put this away, make some room here. I'm so glad I got the new workbench built out because it has so much more room. I can just move stuff. There you go, look at that. You can see the dot projector. No. Flood illuminator flashing at me. Alright, so touch works. Cool, swipe down. It says no SIM. Bluetooth and Wi Fi are not grayed out. Uh, I did hear a sound, so let's go ahead and check that. Ear speaker. Oh, I don't have bottom speaker. The bottom speaker is not working. Although, uh, this you can tell this charging port flex looks aftermarket. This is how you can see all the traces, and it's very flimsy. So I'm gonna assume it's the housing. Well, we'll test it with another one. Uh, all right, you can't tell, but ha uh, haptic engine is working. Uh, Wi-Fi. Here, let me plug in the Wi-Fi antenna. There you go. Now that I plugged in the Wi-Fi antenna, look at that. Thousand Wi-Fi networks. Mine is called VCC Main. Come on, let me turn it off. Turn it on. One thing I noticed is the five five gigahertz Wi-Fi is not there, so that's not good. Let's see. Oh, there it goes. Here it is. It doesn't say here, but uh, but yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, that's good. Let's let's check Face ID. Even though Face ID would not be an issue. From the sandwich, like that. All right, that's good. So let me just check. Do I have that other housing I tested with? So now I just got to test for the um, bottom speaker because there is audio chips on the bottom board. So I just want to make sure there's no issue with that. If there is, it's going to suck. Cause I just spent three and a half hours doing this and I have to redo something. It's going to really suck. And I'll just edit that part out. Just kidding. Let's just, let's just go live, you know? What happens, it happens. All right, the Wi-Fi antenna's plugged in still, so I gotta deal with that. All right, so this is customer A's housing. So let's plug in customer B housing. So anyways, uh, oh sweet, 25 likes, awesome. My arbitrary goal was reached. All right, cool. So, what do you guys think? Have you so who who in the chat has knows how to do bottom board swaps? Um, type type A one if you know how to do bottom board swap. Type A two if you don't. I'm 
wondering, are you going to try one now that you've seen a step-by-step, three-and-a-half-hour video of how I do it, 100% success rates today, kind of. So my success rate today with bottom order swaps is one out of one, which is 100%. So I would say that's pretty good. I don't have any, not that I know of, any more bottom board swaps. Um, and I most likely will not live stream another one because, man, <laughs> this is not. I normally don't go straight. Um, I sometimes take breaks and stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and check audio. Yeah. Is, oh, the mic's not there. I don't know why. I went up to the camera. So, yeah, audio. Oh, yeah, the ear speaker is not plugged in. So you, that's uh, some proof that it's a bottom speaker. All right, cool. So that's it. We're good. Fixed. Uh, let me go back to me. So thanks everyone for staying for three, and three hours and 32 minutes for a bottom board swap. I was honestly not sure what to expect. I mean, I've done a lot of these and uh, I'm, I have pretty high success rates, so I wasn't too worried. But there's always the one that has that doesn't go well, like either touch or um, baseband doesn't work after. Even though I'll try another bottom board or like I don't know, it's weird stuff. So it looks like everything I've tested is working. Um, so that's good. Thanks for watching. Now make sure you check out the links in the description. I have a lot of. Uh, a lot of things there. I have my macro lens for the thermal camera. So if you use a uh, Seek Compact Pro thermal camera, uh, get this macro lens. It lets you um, zoom in pretty close to a board to make you find the shorts easier. Um, I have an eBay store with it. Uh, check out the links for my recommended tool list. Uh, and also, I am part of a micro soldering course. It's a 90 day program. It's online and it's a you get 90 days access to me and Ben where we walk you through everything to get you up and running with micro soldering and offer that as a profitable service within your repair shop. Um, also, some additional uh, like workflow, how to improve your, uh, your, your store make things efficient and make them like a proper business with you know SLPs and all that um, let's see what else what else do I want to show here at the last second um, and make sure you uh, invest responsibly in the stock market the AMC stock has gone down and it sucks because I spent $200 and it's down $80 or something. Um, buy some Bitcoin and I'll see you guys in the next video, maybe sometime next week. Bye guys.